Michelle. Hello. Welcome back to Squirrel's Bookshelf and my vlog of building my dream fantasy library. Want to say hi? So I realized after I uploaded the last video that I completely forgot to talk about the floors in my library. So let me fill you in. Now if you watched all the way to the end of the last video, one, thank you, and two, you would have seen a sneak peek at the ahem floor plan. As you can see, I pulled up the existing carpet and underlay to reveal the beautiful original 1930s floorboards. These darlings need a lot of work, but the plan is to ultimately leave them exposed. With that in mind, I had a bit of cleaning up to do. First, I pulled up the carpet grippers. I then had to carefully scan the room for any loose nails and pull up any nails which were sticking out of the floor from where they had been holding down the underlay. I have to say, um, Pulling up all these nails is really fun because I can see the history. I mean, this is a 1930s house, which is incredibly modern given that um, it's England, but it's still pre-World War II. And you can see the sort of variety of nails that were used in the floor. I'm just thinking how many different floors were put in, how many different carpets. You know, we have the sort of perfectly formed nails that don't even have rust on them. And so they're, probably pretty modern. But then we've got these little ones that are not perfectly round on the top. They're very short, very rusty. And just sort of thinking about the people who put these boards down and what they dressed like and what they listened to, what they did with their lives, how comfortable their lives were or not. You know, 1930s, probably not all that much, but yeah, sort of things I think about. Hopefully I'm just adding to the history of this place. Once the floor was free of pointy things, it was time to start painting. My trusty frog tape by my side. Let's do this. There's going to be quite a lot of paint work to tackle before I return to the floorboards. So while you watch this enthralling montage of taping, let me give you a brief overview of what's to come. Once I finish painting everything, I will then sand the floorboards down to remove the various paint stains, replace a couple of boards that have become a bit wonky, fill the gaps, and then finally stain and or treat the wood. But that's all for a different video. Moving on to the walls, the paint I used here was Valspar's Cool Pine Color with a matte finish. I also used this paint for both doors in the room, the main door and the smaller door to the right which opens into a little storage cupboard. Now because the carpet has been pulled up and there's nothing else yet in the room to dampen the sound, I noticed immediately that the room became very acoustic. My musician of a husband noticed it too. As fun as it is to have such a lively sounding room, I have to say it's not entirely fitting for a library. Therefore, I will be putting down a large ornate rug in the center of the room, still leaving plenty of floorboard showing, of course. With the walls complete, the next task at hand was the ceiling. To recap from the last video, the ceiling is going to be painted like a starry night. So first I need to create some star stencils. 
I designed a few different styles, each in multiple sizes, and printed them out. After cutting those out, I taped and traced them onto some cardboard, and then carefully cut those to create the final stencils. I'm not necessarily going to use all of these styles, but I wanted to give myself options. I'd kind of like the ceiling to look a bit renaissance-y, so I think I'm leaning toward the thicker, more geometric looking stars. With a few exceptions. With my love of nerdy things, I decided to hide a couple of easter eggs amongst the stars. For my first trick, I decided to throw in a subtle homage to my love of Harry Potter. Now in the American first editions of the books, every single page had a tiny trio of stars in the upper corner. So I drew larger versions of these stars and made stencils out of them. Just like the book, these are going to be in the upper corner of the angled part of the ceiling. As for the other Easter egg, you'll just have to watch to the end of this video. Good morning! Welcome to our new conservatory, which I am in the process of turning into a sort of antique jungle adventure exploration room. But that's for a whole other vlog, I suppose. So I did a bit of experimentation with the ceiling last night, and I found that after stenciling maybe a dozen stars onto the diagonal eave part of the ceiling that I was wiped out. <laughs> Having your your arms above your head and looking up for that long period of time is quite tiring. So I have decided to change strategies a bit. One strategy is I, I'm actually not going to stencil all of the stars first. I did take a couple of the stars that I had stenciled and just paint traced um, around the edges of them to see what they would look like and I don't think that's the best option after all um, So what I'm gonna do today is actually just paint the entire ceiling um, With the two different shades of blue. I bought some natural sea sponges to try to paint them in a way that really blends together well um, and then after everything is painted at some other date I am going to then add the stars in. Um, the other thing I've decided, having looked at some of the, the stars that I've stenciled, is I don't really like the bigger stars anymore. Um, I liked them in concept, but actually seeing them there, I think they're a bit, a bit extra. So I'm just gonna use the little stars. There are a few different sizes within those little stars, but um, I think I'm just gonna use those for the ceiling throughout, except for the little Harry Potter Easter egg, which I have traced into the top right corner of the little section of wall that I did last night and I am going to keep those there and I am going to paint around those but everything else it's just going to be something else <laughs> I think I've come up with a plan b for the stars we'll get to that but that's a problem for future Jess I'm just going to be painting today and that should be pretty straightforward and probably still will be tiring but I have the whole day so I'm just going to finish my breakfast, put some painting clothes on, and get to it. Like the wall paint, the two ceiling paints are also Valspar colors. Sailing by Moonlight and Ethereal Dance. I know, brilliant names, right? Both with a silk finish. At first I tried stippling on both colors in succession, but I quickly figured out that it would just be better to do a first coat of just the darker blue, which I just sort of swirled around. For the edges though, I did go in with a brush, blending as much as possible. As I already mentioned, the only pre-stenciled stars I left were the Harry Potter trio, which I traced with the same base coat of paint using a fine brush. For whatever reason, I didn't find working above my head quite as tiring today, perhaps because I wasn't holding my arms continuously over my head for quite as long. But just to be safe, I made sure to take a quick water break and sit down every 15 minutes or so. Health and safety! 
and now to swirly swirl across the rest of the ceiling. Not gonna lie, I found this step immensely satisfying. I was surprised how appealing the swirly base coat was on its own, but it wasn't quite the color nor texture I was envisioning for the final product. Let's keep going. Once the first coat was done and dry, I went back in and stippled more of the darker color, then immediately stippled some of the lighter color over the same area. Like this! Apparently I forgot to turn the camera on for the rest of the second coat, so behold, the second coat is complete! To eliminate the hard lines from tracing the Harry Potter stars, I stippled over the entire area, which blended the paint beautifully but still left the stars completely visible. To now apply the gold foil for the stars, I had to apply the foil adhesive, called Size. I have a fairly steady hand, so I decided to just try painting it on with a very fine brush, and for me that felt comfortable enough. Once the adhesive is in place, it has to sit for some time in order to become tacky. This particular size takes about 15 minutes to get to that point, but once you're there, it stays tacky indefinitely, so there's no rush to apply the foil. Voila! My first foiling attempt. The foil is very delicate and responsive to static electricity, so I use the separating tissue to bring it up to the ceiling. Side note, by this point I had finished the audiobook of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and was well into Order of the Phoenix, read by Stephen Fry. And it was at this very moment that this happened. So that they now seem to be sitting in a forest clearing by twilight, and stars appeared on the ceiling. There were oohs and gasps, and Ron said audibly, Lie Lie back on the floor, said Firenze in his calm voice, and observe the heavens. Here is written, for those who can see, the fortune of our races. Coincidences? Oh, how I love thee. At first I used cotton balls to press the foil against the tacky adhesive, but I later moved to using a dry soft brush. In either case, as I lightly pressed the foil into the ceiling, it would instantly and securely attach itself wherever there was adhesive, then the excess would just break off and flake away. It's quite extraordinary stuff. If I ever didn't quite get the foiling to cover the adhesive, I could just add a flake and almost paint it into place. After filling the ceiling with some gold foiled stars, I then wanted to fill in the remaining space with some painted stars, using one of Rust-Oleum's gold metallic paints. I did this because I wanted some slight variation to the stars, and the paint created a duller sheen and a slightly different color than the foil. I also dug up a bottle of rose gold acrylic paint I already had, and used this over the top of the gold paint on just a few stars to add a third level variant. Now, after finishing the slanted portion of the ceiling, I really liked the finished product and the effect of the slight differences between the stars. However, I realized that painting the stars was actually a lot more work than foiling them, as each star required three to four coats of paint. So for the rest of the ceiling, I think I'm going to switch up the proportions of foil to painted stars. Here I probably did twice as many painted stars as I did foiled ones, 
but I'm going to reverse that for the rest of the ceiling. One, because foiling is much more efficient, and I'd like to get this done. And two, given the more horizontal angle of the rest of the ceiling, the light reflects differently across each foiled star already, offering some variation in color and shine automatically when you look up. all coming together. It's both exciting and terrifying because there's still a lot of work to do and I really miss my books which are for the most part still in boxes and suitcases and backpacks and all sorts of places in storage. Well here but sort of shoved in a corner. Just, I want to get this done as soon as possible, but I have been having to work around my work schedule because my book shop reopened, but I'm so pleased with how far it's come so far. Because of the blend of the two different blues, it actually looks different in different lighting, which is completely unexpected. So at this point, I just have to fill the rest of the ceiling with stars as I have done here, and then the ceiling will be complete. Now to just clean up all the gold flakes on the floor. I am just going to wrap this video up for now and we're going to continue the journey of building my dream fantasy library. <laughs> my dream fantasy library. Later! Thank you guys so much for watching to this point. I hope you're enjoying watching this whole process. I've never really properly like vlogged something before so it's been an interesting experience. It probably has slowed me down a little bit with the actual overall progress, but you know, hey, I get to look back on this as a documentation of putting the whole thing together, and it is a lot of work, so it is nice to be able to reflect on how much I have put into the room already. Now, earlier I did mention that I had another Easter egg planned amongst the stars. The other one that I've made is right up there, and that's the second star to the right from Peter Pan, another well-beloved classic favorite of mine. And that particular star is the only one of that shape included amongst the stars on my ceiling. So, so, mm, ah, uh. so for the next video, I'm hoping to have the bean painted some squirrely medieval pattern, the floorboards complete, and the bookshelves all stained and installed along with all of the other furniture waiting downstairs. Then after that, I think I'll do one final video with all of the fun stuff adding and organizing all of the books, and adding in all of the smaller decorative features. At some point as well, my husband and I are endeavoring to tackle the storage cupboard, which needs a lot of work. It needs a complete overhaul with insulation and some sort of better flooring option in there, possibly a carpet. I also snagged some of this lovely Daily Profit wallpaper by Mina Lima. This usually sells on Mina Lima's website for £89 a roll, but I snagged this on Facebook Marketplace for a tenner. Yes! So I'm eventually going to install this inside the storage cupboard just for funsies and for just, you know, a little nerdy surprise. But to be honest, I don't know when that whole thing is going to happen or if I'm even going to vlog about it. If that is something you want to see whenever it happens, I guess just let me know in the comments. If you are enjoying these videos and you'd like to join our squirrely, nerdy, bookish community, feel free to subscribe. I'm hoping to upload videos more regularly, but I think we're done for the day. Until the next video, be kind, be curious, be effective, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! It's still super acoustic in here, which I'm not gonna lie, I've taken advantage of a bit.